Okay, so I'm um, just going to give a small introduction about the Linode project. Um, so the overall aim of this project is to try to make uh, modular and universal tools for bioinformatics. So what we mean by this is we try to make tools that do one thing well, uh, try to provide highly reusable tools and codes uh, through JavaScript libraries or command line tools, uh, scale by using streams, uh, because one of the problems in bioinformatics is a huge amount of data, so we want to try to take advantage of streams to uh, process that, and finally run everywhere, which is a great advantage of JavaScript. Um, it would be surprised how much time scientists waste trying to get their software to work on different machines. Uh, so to do this, uh, we're using Node.js because it maps to, to what we're trying to achieve. So Node.js is highly modular and has a very open community on GitHub. And you can see that by just looking at the number of Node.js modules that are published, uh, which is growing exponentially, um, which is interesting when compared, for example, with languages that are more popular in um, biology, like R or Python. Um, so even though Node.js is growing a lot in e everywhere, um, it still has to catch up uh, in biology. And the other really cool thing about Node.js is that it provides a native implementation of streams. So after this talk, I'll give a, a brief uh, introduction about Node.js streams, so I'll explain that uh, in more detail there. Uh, and finally, you can run JavaScript on the command line and on the browser. So for example, the letters are probably too small, but here I have a terminal that has, um, is uh, doing, it's parsing um, a file format uh, from Bioinformatics, a format called FASTA. So here I'm just running the test to make sure that my parser is working. Um, so we use file, uh, read file by passing file name. So a faster file format is something that looks like this. You have an identifier in the, the genomic sequence. And what I'm doing is just converting to um, a JSON object. Um, and then I'm doing a bunch of other fancy stuff. But uh, the cool thing is that then I can run exactly the same code uh, without modifying it on the browser. So it's the exact same test running here uh, on the uh, browser console. And the only thing I had to do is, because I'm using the Node.js API, I had to use this tool called Browserify, which will um, allow me to use the same uh, API on the browser. Um, but I think this is very powerful, to be able to run, write code once and then run it everywhere. Um, but people might say, well, but maybe JavaScript is not the best language for highly intensive uh, scientific computation, for example. Um, what about C++ or something like that? The cool thing is you can also uh, combine C++ very nicely with JavaScript. So you can run C code in the uh, Google V8 engine, so inside Node, or you can um, transcribe it to JavaScript and run it on the browser. So there are a bunch of projects like this out there, which allow you to combine uh, a language like C and JavaScript. So with this, you can really uh, build uh, software that is cross-platform. So I think it's a very nice ecosystem to be working on. Um, so by what happened in my PhD, so I, I'm in my final year of my PhD. And um, when I started, I got involved in some um, <coughs> biological web projects, and so one of them was this one. So this is like um, a genome browser. So what you have here are genes, and the user is edit editing the annotation of those genes. Uh, so this happens in the browser. Uh, so it's, this part is all JavaScript. Uh, but this software that I got involved had like, um, the front end was JavaScript, but the back end was Java. And because of this, it didn't scale because a lot of things that could have been done on the uh, client side were being done on server um, without any good reason for it. So what I started doing was to 
try um, convert some of the functions uh, to JavaScript to be able to do some things on, on the browser. Um, that's how the first binary module happened, which is a, a very basic module. Uh, it's binary sex, so it does things like just checking if sequence is DNA or if it's RNA. So basically just uh, pattern matching, just regular expression. Uh, but the thing is there was no library doing this. So if you go on GitHub and try to put, for example, this one just do a reverse of the sequence, or this one does a reverse and a complement, which are basic stuff. But um, everyone just keeps re-implementing these things, so no one is using a, a, a library, which means it's very easy to make small mistakes uh, because you, you're not looking at the full scope of the problem. So it's actually better if we just <laughs> combine uh, our all knowledge you know, on a few tools and a few libraries. So that was how I started coding uh, JavaScript for bioinformatics. But then the other problem I had is for my PhD, I had to fetch uh, terabytes of data uh, from online resources. So JavaScript is also very nice for that, to fetch uh, data online. So my, for my PhD thesis, uh, I wanted to compare social species like uh, ants and bees and termites, uh, compare their genetic diversity uh, with solitary species like, for example, cockroach. So you, you would expect the hypothesis that the social species have a lower diversity than solitary species. So, but the problem is that there's a maze of data sources out there. Uh, and after looking into all this for a while, I figured out, I ended up just using one database called NCBI, which is where most of the genomes are um, stored. And so from a quick query on that database, I found that I could potentially use 167 uh, species. And so I wanted to compare the, whoops, compare the blue ones with the red ones. Um, but the problem is from all these species, I, I didn't know which ones I could actually use um, because the method I was using had some restrictions according to the sample from which the DNA came from. So I need to get all the information about all these genomes before I could make a decision. And so that's why I um, created the module Bionode NCBI to query this um, online resource. So I'm just going to give an example of how this module uh, can work. So for example, if I wanted to figure out where the FTP server, where a genome is stored, so this is the genome for an ant, this is the raw data, but I don't know where this location is, so I need to query the database and figure that out. So when I query the database, I get a JSON object like this from Biomed and CBI. So this is what Biomed and CBI provides you uh, when, um, when you do this, this specific query. So I'm gonna show you how this works. So I, the one I was interested in was just the genomic data, just the DNA. Um, so in JavaScript, you require the Biomed module. And this module is actually a meta module because it will require a bunch of other Biomed modules. So you can use them um, as separate modules if you just require one library, or you can use this one, it fetches everything. Uh, once I have that one, I can fetch the data using um, what's common in JavaScript called a call callback pattern. So I do something like this, bio and CBI URLs. I'm looking for the genome, so the genome assembly, so I look into the assembly database for all the ants, for example. And once I get there, um, it calls a callback that will give me an object with all the URLs. And then I can console log, for example, the first one and get just the genome because I don't care about the other URL. But the thing with this is that I'll have to wait for all the data to get fetched. Uh, before that, I won't get any result. And actually, I could be doing something useful while uh, I'm fetching uh, all these species. And so one way to, alternative way to do it is to use the event pattern. So because Binode and CBI uh, <coughs> uses streams, what I can do is I can do the same query, but now I'll attach an event. So on data, when I receive a data event, I um, run this function to print the genome URL. So now I'll be printing the URLs as I get for each uh, species uh, from Binode and CBI. And the cool thing is that there's still a lot of boilerplate code here. So I can actually do this uh, using a pipe pattern. 
So here I'm requiring only the bio modern CGR module. I'm requiring a JSON parser. And what I'm doing is I do the same query, but now I pipe to the JSON parser to convert the JavaScript object into a string, and then I pipe directly to the terminal. Uh, so this is very uh, powerful because this starts looking like what we use a lot in bioinformatics, the Unix pipes. Um, so it's very easy from this to go to this. So I can also use the bioload um, library as a command line tool. So I can do exactly the same thing I, I showed you on the command line. And I can pipe to a JSON parser. And then I can get, for example, the first result. So this allows me to use it uh, without uh, using JavaScript um, if I want to, and to combine it with other existing tools. So after that, um, I used BioModernCDI <coughs> to fetch all the metadata I could, and I actually figured out, because of several reasons, that I could only use like a very small subset of these genomes. So this saved me a lot of time. Uh, otherwise, I would have probably to like look at all the papers and all the links on all the, the, the database to figure out if I could use that. So actually, the raw data for my PhD compressed now that I can use is seven terabytes. Um, so the other reason why I started doing all this is that um, I had to also build the very complicated bioinformatics pipelines. So as I showed you, just to fetch the data, uh, I had to do a lot of stuff. And so with streams, it's very nice to create pipelines. So a pipeline is basically you have a readable stream, like you're fetching something from the web, you can pipe to a transform stream, do something with it, and then you can write to the terminal or to a file. And so this is an example of the pipeline I used to filter all, to get all the metadata for the genomes I needed. So what's happening here at the beginning, I'm querying for the raw data set. But then once I get that metadata, each branch is querying uh, the sample metadata, the paper metadata, the project metadata, the, gen the reference genome metadata. So I'm querying all these things at the same time while I'm fetching uh, one object from here, like each species. While that's happening, I'm doing all this and I'm storing everything um, into the database so I can then uh, filter it all. But you can see it's starting to look very uh, complicated. Um, and the other thing is also, this is for metadata processing, but actually to do the analysis, I also have to come up with some crazy pipelines. So on this one here, I'm just um, processing the reference genome and the raw data through a series of steps. So I can then compare uh, the raw data with the reference and look for variance, basically look for difference. But I have to use all these softwares and combine all, all of them together and uh, process the output of one into the input of the other. Um, so I think uh, Node.js is really nice to, for this for this kind of uh, pipeline handling. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of what the pipeline could look like for the metadata. For here, I'm doing a search for the SRA. So SRA is a small... Uh, reads archive, so it's an archive of raw data, and I'm looking for this PC. Now, a cool thing I can do with, with uh, Node.js streams is I can have um, a pass-through stream, which I'll explain in the second part of uh, the talk. And, but from this stream, I'm fetching data here, and I'm storing into a database. But the cool thing now is that I can, the data that came through here, I can pipe it to something else, so I can extract something from that object, like the sample ID, and I can do another query for the sample. And then I can store that into a database. And then I can have other sparks that use the same data that came here to do other stuff. Uh, so that's how I did that uh, crazy workflow that you saw before. And the cool thing is if I attach to each of these steps a counter, just to see data passing through, I can see another nice property of streams, which is back pressure. So Node.js streams handle themselves um, uh, the flow of data. So here, as I'm fetching the, the reads, around like 50 data sets per second, so this is querying the database online, I'm fetching all the other, um, uh, all the other metadata on other databases related to these reads. Uh, and so what you could see was that the numbers were incrementing at different speeds. 
um, and everything was regulated uh, itself without any anything crashing on or losing data. So I don't have to worry if uh, a request is taking on, uh, too long and might uh, um, drop because the, the stream will just wait for it. And so because of all these crazy workflows and pipelines uh, things we're doing, we actually got the Google Summer of Code student now that is trying to implement a proper bi-node workflow engine so that you can combine Node.js modules and command line tools and do this kind of crazy uh, pipeline processing. And although the aim is for bioinformatics, uh, once it's done, it should probably work with any uh, use case, uh, like physics or data analytics. So finally, when I started all this, um, I just did it because I thought it was a good idea to put my code online, to open source it. I didn't see any disadvantage of it. Uh, and now it has taken off and there's uh, already a lot of people involved. Uh, we're doing this hackathon and we have um, uh, people from other projects contributing to this project. And we exchange ideas, um, which I think is very uh, useful. Um, and that's it. Thank you.